Okay, I'd like to solve for you what I think is uh, an incredibly cute problem. Uh, this is problem 3.4. And uh, I'll show you here why what makes it a cute problem. So we're told uh, our yield stress is uh, some number or whatever. Pega Pascal, uh, that's, you know, I guess kind of important, but uh, the real important thing here is that we have sigma two is equal to one half sigma one and sigma three equals zero. These are principal stresses. And the problem is to solve the uh, Rankin, Tresca, and von Mises criterion. So the uh, place I always start is drawing a more circle. And I do that because it kind of helps you get your footing. So if uh, P3 is there, P1, say, is here, and then P2 is halfway between, oh, let me change my notation here, sigma 2 and uh, sigma 1. Great. So those are our principal uh, stresses. That means that we have more circles that look something like this. OK. So uh, so the Rankin criteria is, is basically that the maximum uh, the maximum uh, normal stress when it goes over top of the yield stress it, it yields so Rankin part a is simply that Sigma one is greater than uh, the yield stress okay Trieska B is that the maximum shear stress uh, is larger. So from page 200 of our textbook, we have sigma P1 minus sigma P2, uh, sorry, P P3 over two is equal to max larger than sigma y over two. So basically we're saying sigma p1 minus sigma p3 over two is sigma y, that is equal to zero. So sigma p1 is larger than sigma y. So the same condition. And you know you can think of that graphically simply in terms of knowing that uh, that is tau max. So when tau max <clears throat> uh, goes over uh, the yield stress, then it, it it uh, fails. And last, we have von Mises. And let me look up the equation again here. Von Mises is that square root of 2 over 2 p1 minus p2 squared plus p3 
two minus P three squared plus P three minus P one squared, so one half larger than the yield stress. And again, we now have zero and zero, which allows us to simplify this problem. to uh, one half, we can expand that polynomial. Okay, so far so good. And then we can go back up here and recognize that we've got a relationship between P1 and P2 that we can apply. So this allows us to write square root of two over two sigma P1 squared minus sigma P1 one half sigma P1 plus one half sigma p one squared plus sigma. Sorry. Plus one half sigma p one squared plus p one squared one half. I'm oh, sorry. I'm gonna try to keep my notation constant here. Okay, we got that. which simplifies to two over two sigma one squared minus one half sigma one squared plus one fourth sigma one squared plus one fourth sigma one squared plus sigma one squared. one half. These cancel each other out one half or minus one half plus one quarter plus one quarter. So we have square root of two over two, two sigma one squared to the one half, which becomes square root of two over two square root of two sigma one is equal to two over two sigma one is equal to sigma one. And I dropped my uh, requirement there, but it's gonna be sigma y. So for, <laughs> well, kind of scrunch things up a little bit here, but uh, for all three criteria, in the condition that our stress state is P3 is equal to zero, P2 is equal to one half P1, they have exactly the same criteria that they fail when sigma P1 is larger than the yield stress and the yield stress you know, we were given in the problem. And I, I think that's kind of a neat problem the way they set it up so that with a little bit of polynomial work, you can uh, see that these have uh, identical solutions.